Welcome to Communicating Archaeology. I am Dr. Colleen Morgan, lecturer in Digital Archaeology and Heritage. This year I'm on research leave, but I will be narrating your lectures and potentially supervising some of your dissertations, especially if they are on topics covered in this module. This is Dr. James Taylor, lecturer in Digital Archaeology. He will be leading this module, guiding you through your activities and seminars. You're in good hands. This is Despina Sempatico. She is a PhD student studying digital storytelling and archaeology. She will be reviewing all of your activities and helping guide the seminars. So we ask, why communicating archaeology? This class was designed in response to three provocations. First of all, visual skills are central to archaeological practice. While we must use all of our senses to interpret the archaeological record, we record and transmit this record through drawings, images, and text. Simon James, from your reading this week, has several fairly unfriendly things to say about the visual literacy of current archaeologists. It is a truism that archaeology is a profoundly visual discipline. It is paradoxical, then, that so much of its output exhibits a poor level of what I opt to call visual competence. So, number two, archaeologists have a specialist visual vocabulary that is central to professionalization within the discipline. You must not only be able to decipher archaeological visualizations, you must be able to make them yourself. This is a page from the Museum of London manual on how to draw context plans. We will revisit these next week, but as the next slide demonstrates, it is helpful to understand how the photograph on the left is related to the drawing on the right, and why they are both necessary for transmitting archaeological interpretations. Which brings us to number three. Archaeologists and heritage practitioners need to be conversant in the communication of data to specialists and non-specialist audiences. We have a great tradition of archaeological communicators from this department, including York alumna Dr. Annie Gray, who has made a tremendous career through researching and writing about historic foodways, including writing books, appearing on television and radio. And, of course, Greg Jenner, who was the historical consultant for Horrible Histories, has written a book about fa dead famous people and is now the host of the You're Dead to Me podcast. As Sarah Perry notes, this is the potent role that digital and analog visualization plays in archaeology. It enables forms of thinking and practice that are potentially revolutionary for the discipline. But, more broadly, it arguably has a stake in transforming the world at large, building a more democratic, inclusive, critically engaged, and truly reflexive network of media and people. So, visualizing your data encourages you to think of your subject in new, productive ways. Further, learning how to communicate is critically important to counter racist and nationalist uses of the past. For example, this Unite the Right rally, populated by white supremacists and neo-Nazis, uses Viking runes as a hate symbol. And we will come back to these issues in a later lecture. So this course isn't necessarily just for those who aspire to be media celebrities, though certainly some have chosen to do so. Some choose to be public archaeologists or museum professionals or educators. But even if you decide to be just an archaeologist, it's important to be able to communicate about your research. Many of these media skills are directly translatable to other careers as well. The learning outcomes for this module are as follows. Demonstrate the use of images to effectively communicate archaeological concepts. Use social media to disseminate archaeological concepts. Create basic maps. Assess various audiences for archaeological communication. And, and use digital media to communicate archaeology. But really, there should be an extra added learning outcome. You must learn to make better, more compelling narratives about archaeology than the racists and nationalists who use distortions of the past to gain power and to hurt people. This is the structure of the course. Each week you will have readings, a lecture, and an activity to complete. Then you will upload the activity to Padlet to discuss for your seminar. 
Despina and James will give you feedback on your activities and further discuss each mode of communication through media. Most students struggle with one or more of these activities. You may take this as a challenge to improve your practice, or you can focus on one of the other activities that you find more gratifying. The object of the module is to expose you to the many different ways archaeologists use to communicate. Your formative assessment for this course will be to engage with the weekly activities by uploading your media to Padlet. This will allow you to receive feedback that will be helpful for forming your summative assessment. For your summative assessment, you will identify an archaeological site that is used visual media in their interpretation and presentation of the archaeological remains. Drawing from the literature and arguments presented in the lectures, critically discuss the existing media in terms of the authorship of the resource, its intended audience, and how effective it is in reaching that audience. After this critical analysis, choose from the media presented during this course, for example, photography, illustration, maps, 3D, video games, etc., to create your own visual interpretive materials to present the archaeological site. For example, you may look at the existing photographs, maps, and illustrated reconstructions of Starcar and choose to create a map that would represent the Mesolithic landscape. Describe how this compares to the existing media. What does it show? To what audience? The weighting of marks will be 75% for academic content and 25% for demonstration of technical skills in creating your project. Students who have been successful in this class in the past engage with the weekly activities to the best of their abilities and keep an eye on the critical literature. The topic of this dissertation is open, so you may choose to incorporate some materials from a site that you're thinking about examining for your dissertation. This is encouraged as it helps you build a visual narrative to accompany your dissertation topic.